Hello, everyone. My name is Yilun Jin from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And it is my great honor to be here to present at the web conference 2021 on our paper, Theoretically Improving Graph Neural Networks via Anonymous Work Graph Kernels. This work is done in collaboration with researchers at Peking University. So I will first introduce the motivation and the background of this work. And then I will introduce our model design called GSKN. And then I will introduce the theoretical results on our model before going into the empirical experimental results to verify our model. And finally, I will do a brief summary of our work. So this work basically tackles network data. Networks describe many types of data in real world. For example, in social networks, the network is formed by social network users and the links can be formed by various relationships such as friend relationships. And in biology networks, the nodes can be molecules and the links can be different interactions among molecules. And also in academic networks, nodes can be scholars and the links can be of different types. For example, for example a link can either be an author published a paper and a paper is published in a conference, etc. And when we talk about GNNs, basically GNNs support machine learning tasks, tasks on networks. There are many types of machine learning tasks on networks. For example, if we want to identify fraud transactions on transaction graphs, then we need to carry out node classification where each node is a transaction or a user. And when we carry out um, when we carry out the task of uh, prediction friendships, for example, on social networks, then we need to carry out link prediction tasks on social networks. Both of them can be enabled by GNNs. And more specifically, this work ta talks about the expressive ability of GN GNNs. Despite the, despite the power of GNNs in many practical tasks, uh, theoretical results have shown that the Expressive ability of GNNs are upper bounded by the one way Spaler Lyman test or the ice graph isomorphism test. And the one WR test has been shown unable to distinguish or count many substructures. For example, uh, cliques or rings are unable for GNNs and also for the one WR tests. However, these substructures in networks are very important as they shed light on various network tasks. For example, and the high order structural units or patterns such as motifs and graphlets are very, very important properties in networks and I will show an example later. This is the example of network motifs in biological networks. As can be shown, there are three species and form different networks between species. And as can be shown in the figure below, the distributions of, of the distributions of network motifs in different species are highly different. So here comes the research question. How can we design graph neural networks to provably capture and represent sub substructures and improve the existing graph neural networks in both theoretical and practical aspects? And there are two key challenges in this, in this efforts. First, we need to carry out theoretical analysis on graph neural networks, which is, which is hard as graphs are very highly intractable. And also we need to do this with high flexibility as our model should not rely on fixed sets of substructures because in real world networks can be very diverse and complex and we cannot rely on fixed sets of substructures to model the whole range of, whole range of networks. And then I will go into the backgrounds of our work First, I will talk about a technique that is used in our paper called anonymous walks. In an anonymous walk, nodes are represented by the first appearances instead of their exact identities. And the and a good property about anonymous walks is that are that uh, they implicitly represent graph structures. Let me show you an example. For a random walk in the right graph, like such as 9, 18, 19, and 9 they can be anonymized into one, two, three, and one. And it can be immediately shown that it is generated through a triadic closure. 
and triadic closures are very uncharacteristic in social networks. And for more theoretical analysis, you can check the reference here. And basically, we use the properties in that they we use the properties of it's of the relationship between AWs and graph structures. And then I will talk about another key component in our work, which is graph kernels. Basically, graph kernels compute similarity between two graphs um, using recursive node-wise computation. For example, in the equation here, k g1 g2 is the graph kernel, which is computed via uh, summing up all the node kernels, k base u1 u2. Another very important property is that graph kernels in induce kernel mappings that maps graphs to vector spaces, which might be infinite of infinite dimensions. And the, the kernel mapping satisfies the property that uh, the inner product of the kernel mappings are the kernel function values. And let me show you an example. Uh, the random walk graph kernel is a commonly used kernel in graph classification, which is done which is done by comparing all length L walk, random walks on two graphs via a base kernel delta. And in practice, the delta kernel can, are, is commonly taken as the Gaussian kernel or the RBF kernel. It is commonly used in different pa pattern recognition uh, works. And basically this kernel is very useful in classifying graphs, uh, which serves as a very powerful baseline. So, here comes the question, why do we use graph kernels for powerful graph neural networks? Well, there are many different reasons for that, but two key reasons are that graph kernels in, in inherently involve comparisons between substructures. For example, as the random walk graph kernel compares random walks, definitely. And there are also graph kernels that compare different types of uh, structures, such as subtrees or shortest paths or graphlets, etc. And therefore, it is natural for us to study substructures uh, using graph kernels. Another important property is that uh, there have been identified connections between graph kernels and graph neural networks. Basically, uh, the connection is identified via the kernel mappings of graph kernels. And there are some references. There are some references in this slide, and you can go to check the details. And therefore, in this work, we leverage graph kernels to design and an analyze powerful graph neural networks in both theoretical and empirical manners. And here is an overview about our model, GSKN. Basically, GSKN combines two kernel mappings, two graph kernel mappings. The first is a random walk graph kernel, and the second is an anonymous walk graph kernel. And these kernel mappings are approximated via multi-layered graph neural networks and combine each other in and are combined with each other in the in the kernel space. So first, I will introduce the anonymous walk graph kernels, which we which formally extends anonymous walks to form graph kernels. First, we need to represent an an anonymous walk. For an anonymous walk phi with length l, the its feature space lies in uh, lies in the l squared dimensional vector space that denotes the concatenation of one hot attributes along it. For example, if phi equals one, two, three, one, then R phi can be done in the one hot manner. And the kernel computation is similar to the random walk graph kernel in that, and the difference is that we replace a random walk features with anonymous walk features. And then we combine anonymous walk kernels with random walk kernels because random walk kernels incorporate node attributes, which are very important in classifying graphs and also classifying nodes. And the results, the, result, the resultant kernel is the anonymous random graph walk kernel called the ARGK. And the resultant kernel mapping is simple as we use sum to combine the kernels and the resultant kernel mapping would be a simple vector concatenation, which provides uh, theoretical insights to our future analysis. And the question, the question of the kernel mappings of the ARGK and the RWGK is that the kernel mappings of both kernels are of infinite dimensions thanks to the Gaussian kernel introduced here, introduced here. And 
as we cannot tackle infinite dimensional features, we need to approximate them. And the method is called the Nystrom method. We approximate them into Q dimensional, into Q dimensional features. And the approximation works just like a graph neural network, which is shown here. You can see that it aggregates different uh, anonymous walks on, on a graph and does nonlinear combinations, that does nonlinear uh, transformations on the features. And therefore, it is also natural to extend it into, multi, into multi layer versions, as can be shown here. We just simply stack L layers of the single layer kernel mapping. And here we briefly go through our theoretical results on our work. So first, we show that GSKN is at least as powerful as the 1WR test, and hence the strongest message passing graph neural networks. And the intuition about the lemma is that um, concatenation of two, two vectors preserves the expressive power. Recall that uh, phi AR, ARU is, concat is the concatenation of both the AW and the RW mappings. And therefore, uh, the expressive power of the uh, anonymous random walk kernel will be, will be the stronger of these two. And also, we also show that there exists graph, graphs G such that the anonymous random graph kernel proposed in our work is strictly more powerful than the 1WR test. And this is a corollary of, the, of another work which shows that 1WR test cannot distinguish between one ring of 2K and two rings with K each. And therefore we show that our ARGK can easily distinguish these two via anonymous walks. We just let them walk and, and see whether there are uh, node sequences of greater or equal to K. And that is sufficient to show this result. And then we show our experiments. First, we show several experiments on synthetic data sets. First, we generate four types of structural graphs, cycles, wheels, paths, and ladders, which are shown on the right. And on these, on these graphs, GSKN outperforms all baselines, which shows that GSKN is indeed more capable in distinguishing structures in general. And also, we generate another synthetic data set called regular. In this data set, we generate two types of graphs. The first is a 20 node connected five regular graphs versus two, two 10 node five regular graphs. And this has been shown to be theoretically incapable for message passing graph neural networks, such as the GCKN introduced below. And the results are pretty um, correspond, pretty corresponds to the theory in that GCKN is random and GSKN is 100% accurate. And therefore, GSKN is po more powerful in identifying structures. And then we introduce our results on benchmarking data sets using graph classification and node classification data sets. And on graph classification, GSKN significantly outperforms all baselines in all data sets except Colab. And on node classification, GSKN outperforms the outperforms baselines on PPI where the, the structural information is very significant. And also we can see that uh, GSKN outperforms baselines on PubMed, but not on Quora. And also we run efficiency tests on our model GSKN. And we can see that GSKN is comparable with the most efficient graph kernels, like the Wiesfela Lyman graph kernels and the GSKN and the graph to back, which shows that GSKN is highly scalable um, in real world applications. And also GSKN is more than 200 times more efficient than the anonymous walk embeddings, AWE, which is another anonymous walk based approach, which shows the power of our model over AWE. So to summarize, we present GSKN, a GNN with provably stronger ability to distinguish graph structures. And we design GSKN via novel anonymous walk graph kernels, and we theoretically analyze its power using kernel mappings. And we also do extensive empirical experiments to show the power of our model as well as the efficiency. So that's all. If you want to check more details, you can go to the links. And thanks for your attention very much.